Dr. Miller here with another presentation I gave at the UNPL conference. Uh, 2022 is um, when I'm recording this, so uh, that's when I gave this presentation. I gave, if you haven't seen my presentation, uh, I put up oh, a couple presentations ago, <laughs> a couple videos ago on the appropriate uh, program for the appropriate athlete. You might find that helpful if you're interested in training, but it's not often I get to re um, talk about new research and some really interesting research that's developing and um you know uh, i've seen a lot of new things like if you go back to the 70s like you know pleometrics became plyometrics and you know all these different things i think it was late 60s fred wilt took that but anyway you know i, I feel like this is one of those areas that is going to blow up in the next probably five years i think you're going to see a lot of products but you know it's also sifting through some of the garbage that could arise as a result of this new research um but i want to share this presentation with you since i shared the last one by the way if you haven't already um subscribe to my channel a lot of cool stuff on here and um you know cool stuff being like educational videos journal clubs book reviews all these good stuff and then of course every, whenever i make presentations and conferences i like to share them as well so um if you're more welcome to watch this video all the way through see if you like it first um i do encourage you to watch it at the end i thought there were some really good questions that came up when i presented this and um i think that'll maybe answer some of your questions you might have about this new research so i wanted to get into this so let's go ahead and go forward so first of all what is this recent let me back up for a second you saw the the slide so this is the what's going on i'm so excited about it. i can't you know <laughs> get ahead of myself here so there's some recent re, uh, literature in the last two years that there's contractile contr contributions of fat and fatty acids and mostly fatty and depending on what the two different studies that are or two different groups of studies that are out is that um one of them is probably more effective in a triglyceride form but um it the other one may not matter and i'll talk about what i what i mean here in a second but i wanted to show you this research and again this is this is new stuff this is like some of the new supplements come out you know all the research come out and there's gonna be a hype around it but you know how much of it is actually um going to be supported over time i don't know but i think it's worth talking about now so these are the three studies that um that have come about in the last couple years uh, regis et al um you can see the one by uh, kuman and Roderick. um so the two big things here, these studies were mostly looking at jump height, but um, it could translate into strength as well. Um, and that's that fat compression exerts about 20% increase in jump height. I'm gonna have, I have a little slide that I, when I made this presentation, I think it's helpful, I'll share it with you as well. And then uh, this one, the second one, um, Akumin was, you know, long chain fatty acids exhibit a compression characteristic. So roughly 10 to 12%. So two studies that showed a benefit of, of fat uh, specifically in this case visceral fat we'll look in a second in jump height and then the last one is long chain unsaturated fat, unsaturated fatty acids you'll see why this is important it's not saturated but unsaturated um, may act as contractile uh, proteins may have contractile properties right so if you're not familiar with sliding filament theory you can go back and watch my video on that but actin and myosin and, and sliding across one another um, there may be something going on with some of the chemical bonds and unsaturated fatty acids uh, which I'll highlight here in a second, that might um, be boosting performance. So this is, like I said, this is pretty scriptive. When I did this presentation um, in full, I went into these studies a little bit deeper. I kind of I figured you didn't want to listen to that. And so um, I cut it down a little bit, but um, let me just draw, uh, draw upon some of the popular media too, just so you can see this is getting more popular and even some government media and even some researchers um, that are pretty respected in the field that are starting to take notice of this. Um, the fact that fat may have these this added benefits you know fats of our three macros you know protein is um, obviously the one that gets a lot of attention carbs for the gas pedal fat for um you know hormone balance and you know it's often you know body fat itself is sometimes well it's, it's not good to carry around i would say it isn't from for the most part but maybe some of this recent research is saying that some body fat maybe even um in some cases excessive body fat if you can carry it could be beneficial um, so just some things, again, so you can see this is coming in popular media endorsed by five MM fighters, including Terry Schroeder, um, major league baseball is considering a corporation because of compression torque study. So what I mean by incorporation is that some of the strength conditioning coaches are interested in this because of the rotation that occurs. So these studies are more in jump, looking at jump height, but there could be some benefit too in rotation. So, um, you know, when somebody rotates, um, you have, um, some compression, really it's more like, uh, more like a torsion, um, that occurs throughout the midsection and fatty acids may provide some um, some benefit as they're uncoiled. So maybe more body fat in the midsection might be helpful in producing more um, rotational torque and generate greater bat velocities, maybe even pitching velocities. So Major League Baseball is really interested in this research. Um, this has gotten obviously into, um, you know, those that might be interested in producing more fat, you know, like we kind of seen with um, one of the popular diets out there. 
Um, U.S. Dairy Farmers Annual Report Promoting Whole and 2% Products as er Ergogenic Aid. So obviously this has been around for a while just in terms of whey protein and casein. That's a part of milk products or dairy products, period, not just milk products. Um, But this is another angle potentially that U.S. dairy farmers are looking at, United States dairy farmers are looking at. And they already um, have a, a marketing campaign under construction. Um, looking to, you know, kind of like uh, when chocolate milk became really popular and it got in strength conditioning, they're going to do the same thing with promoting fat. And then Dr. Stuart Medax, uh, professor of biochem at UNTA, um, he's probably one of the prominent uh, uh, you know, people when it comes to biochemistry. I think he's highly regarded in the world. I mean, I don't know a ton about biochemists, but um, he's he's thought of very highly. And he's been talking about this of recent, um, uh, you know, some YouTube videos I've seen him just kind of mentioning it. So Really interesting stuff. So what is the theory here? Let me move my picture out of the way here. And so I just, um, what I did is, um, sorry, this is based on the, I'm going to move myself around a little bit, but this is based on these two studies I mentioned before. They kind of uh, hypothesize the same thing is that if this is a fatty acid, so this could be a saturated fat, right? So you have, you know, carbons and, and the hydrogens, the bonds associated with the carbons. And so um, when you have these fatty acids though, right? And this could be the, you know, the, the head that's attached to like the triglyceride, the, the fatty acid, so I'm just trying to show this though, what it might look like is, you know, um, when you have somebody that has some, some body fat, this, this guy doesn't have a lot, but if, if he had more, when he goes into, um, you know, maybe even some spinal flexion, um, if it was lumbar, maybe lumbar flexion, T-spine flexion, right? And then of course, hip flexion, right? You're going to have some, um, some part of the fat mass around the midsection, the central adiposity, you know, if it's big enough, push on the upper thigh and maybe even the upper, you know, around the hip region. Okay. So even if it's not a lot that hangs over to touch the upper thigh, there might be some in the hip. And so, you know, when this guy uncoils, um, so this basically compresses these fatty acids. So these fatty acids are lined up in, in central adiposity. And, th- and this is, you know, this is more like microanatomy, right? like histology, right? So like the tissue level, even going inside the tissues, of course, but it also applies to some gross anatomy as well. There might be some release that occurs as a result of, um, you know, p- uh, compressing fat, but it, it appears it's not so much the gross anatomy, but they're actually even just some compression of body fat. So extra body fat, even if it isn't touching the upper thigh, like I mentioned before, is that you have this compressive force that occurs on these fatty acids. And so when these fatty acids are compressed, of course, when like this guy jumps, like this guy's doing a box jump up here, he's still a little bit in flexion, but you know, he, he, pro- he started straight up and then he counter moved, right? When he counter moved, he created this compression. And now he's jumping, and so he's releasing some of that compression as he goes in hip extension. And this is kind of exaggerated version of this, but if, if this was to go, this guy was to go into this position, right? This position, you know, hyperextension of the spine. Um, if we could see her from the side here, she's probably into hip hyperextension as well. I mean, really unloading this compression. So this, you know, I'm trying to show that, you know, here was the initial length compressed, and then it's elongated. This, you know, fatty, and that drawn out real well, but this fatty acid is elongated now. So it released, it's like a spring, right? It releases this compressive force. And so in her case, this would be stretch even more, right? This, this, this long chain fatty acid, and it's usually in long chain fatty acids, not a medium chain, um, long chain fatty acids, you know, like 18 carbon chain, 20 carbon chain, 22 carbon chain, and so on. Um, this is where you're going to see the greatest benefit. Okay. So, you know, you compress it and you release it, right? That might, this is, there appears to be some link to this. Now, this was the other, st- um, a little more controversial, but um, this idea that these two um, fatty acids, these have to be unsaturated. So you get the double bond here. So you get the, the kink in the chain, if you will, right? So uh, a saturated fatty acid, right? It was like the one I just showed in the last slide. So there wasn't a whole lot of interaction of the two fatty acids like on it. This is where triglyceride would be helpful um, because now you have, you know, three fatty acids hanging on the glycerol backbone. And so these fatty acids be hanging off here. And what happens is when there, there's no compression, there's no interaction between these two uh, long chain fatty acids. But when there's compression, it pushes. So you could, again, this is, remember this is like three dimensional. It's gonna push down that glycerol backbone and cause some of those fatty acids to interact with one another. And the electrical charges that occur, and this, this isn't drawn well because the kink in the bond here is a, is a carbon, uh, you know, but basically when these carbons interact, okay, the, the charges of the carbons push each other away. Okay. And so when this occurs and, the, and it has to be unsaturated or these two, just by form, just the, the actual structure of the chemical, um, com, uh, composition, right. There has to be usually monounsaturated is the best cause you just have the one double bond, but it forces these two saturated, uh, or these two fatty acids together. 
right? So these two fatty acids are pushed together as well. If there's no double bond here, then the fatty acids are straight. They're not going to interact with one another. So, so the compressive side would be more, be more like saturated fat. This would be more like monounsaturated fat, maybe polyunsaturated fat. It just depends on how the uh, free fatty acid is and where the, the actual, um, the points are where there is double bonds. And so what happens is there's electrical charges here that repel one another. And so as the, the fat is released, right, as you know, we saw the compressive um, theory on the slide before this one. Now we have this electrical, right, push apart, right? It's basically polarization, right? So, you know, you know opposites attract, you know, all that good stuff. And so these two um, fatty acids push each other apart. And so in so doing that releases now um, energy, right? That's not just by the result of actually compressing um, the, you know, the chain of carbons, but now you're getting also some, um, electrical charge that's, you know, generating some force as well. So, I mean, a lot of stuff going on. These are interesting theories. And, you know, I showed you like that you're, you're looking up to almost a 20% increase in jump height. This was just on a vertical jump so far, but again, this is why you, you can see why people are excited about this and maybe incorporating this in their training. And so I wanted to share this again. I cut out some of the slides. This was a little bit longer presentation when I gave it um, at the conference. Um, but I wanted to highlight these mechanisms because I, 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 this could be really cool, you know, and, you know, what does this mean? Um, well, this is, this is what the authors kind of, and I, I, I agree with this, you know, you have to be careful because of health concerns, right? You don't want to necessarily just get fat, right? Gain body fat, especially in the midsection, um, because there's some negative health outcomes associated with that, like type two diabetes, but, um, it could be periodized. So you could train you know, like say you stay lean or somebody could stay lean and then gain right before a season or right before, if they're a jumper or something like that, like a high jumper, I'm thinking you know, like a track and field athlete, field athlete, obviously, um, you know, they could benefit from gaining some body fat right before the competition. And I showed you, um, um, why well, it's right here. The 5% increase in performance per two pounds of body weight is, is hypothesized as the, um, the, you know, the, the in and out, right? So how much you gain and how much you get out of it. Um, so, you know, if an athlete gained, you know, two, four pounds, two to four pounds right before, um, season or, you know, whenever an important, maybe jump event was occurring, that might be helpful in performance because you're going to get all these compressive forces or the fatty acids then also get the, um, you know, electrical charges interacting with one another, right. Um, and pushing each other apart. So, you know, creating a polarity there that's pushing them apart. Um, so in order to gain fat though, not too quickly and, and, um, if you want to do this longer, if somebody tried to do this longer, you have 250 calories per day of almost entirely fat. So you don't want to, I mean, it's true. You could have some more carbohydrates, but then you start getting into insulin resistance, things like that. It's just, you want this to be, um, fat and 75% from unsaturated because remember that unsaturated fat, you'll still get the compressive forces, but the unsaturated fat has the extra bonus of, you know, the charges, um, interacting, right? The polarity problem, if you want to think of it that way. Um, and they're usually healthier. So you know, you don't want to eat too much saturated fat. Um, you'll still get the benefit, uh, with the unsaturated fat. Hypothetically, if you want all the compressive forces, then you, you could do saturated fat, but then again, you're re really asking for some health problems associated with that. Somebody starting leaner may be more beneficial because if they're leaner, um, they don't have any benefit, right? So if you have somebody like me, who's carrying a little bit extra body fat around the midsection, uh, you know, whatever benefit I'm gaining from that body fat has already been realized. And I could gain a little bit more, but then you're like, okay, well, I'm heavier at a certain point. Getting too much heavier can negate any benefit from this. So like a leaner athlete might benefit more from this, um, you know, from adding fat in. Um, again, more beneficial flows of store adiposity. So for essential adiposity, not just adiposity. So if some, like typically female athletes, typically store more body fat, females in general store more body fat in the upper thigh region, not every female bathroom, but it's very, it's less common for males, but it doesn't mean it can happen. But that may be, may be a person that wouldn't gain as much from this. So central adiposity storage is really important. Like you don't want to push a lot of that in the thigh region because that's not very helpful. You know, you don't have any um, joints right in your middle of your thigh. So you're not going to get that compressive force like you would by going in hip flexion and having, again, a lot of compression, uh, compression occur through that central adiposity region. And the last one here, you know, uh, you can see this nutrition company here, Liar Nutrition, um, really coming up with... I've seen some of the stuff they have and, and, you know, it can't be any crazy like fat water and stuff. Right. But they're basically making a supplement that's just loaded in fat, unsaturated fat primarily. And they're marking it as, you know, um, this great ergogenic aid, you know, um, just be aware. There's gonna be a lot of products coming out that are pushing this. Um, this is the first one. They'll probably make a ton of money, but, um, 
you know, I got to do is put somebody jumping higher or they uh, proves performance and incite these three studies and you got yourself right. Something to make, you know, to retire off of basically. So that was the biggest thing um, when I made this presentation that I just wanted to, you know, cover those things and I asked if they had any questions and I wanted to cover some of the biggest questions and I'll start with the first one that came out of this. Um, and is it, is this for real? And the answer is no, no, it's not. Um, but the logical fallacies and conflict of interest potential is, uh, and so there was, um, affirming the consequent, there was survivorship bias, appeal to authority. Um, so all kinds of stuff. So no fat does not have any contractile properties that I'm aware of. And this whole, um, video was bogus. So I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that. It's good to have fun every once in a while. All right. So, um, if, if you fell for it, don't feel bad. I've done this in class before something similar to this and I had students taking notes. So, um, it's all right. It's, it, it's hilarious though. Um, I do the same thing when other people present things, I tend to take it on surface. I, I, I do this as more for fun, not to make anybody feel bad. So hope you took it that way and I will see you in the next video.